Ever since I made that video about playing Ark Knights for 4 years, I realized it really has been a while since I installed the game and the new player experience is really different now compared to when I was just starting out. I also read comments about how some people just got into Ark Knights for less than a year or so, so I figured I want to share my experience on the do's and don'ts about the game to save players from ruining their experience. I know there are already a lot of beginner tips out there already but honestly, content has been really dry for Ark Knights and story summary videos take a long time to make so here I am sharing my insights to new potential players or maybe even you who's watching right now that just needs a little bit of push for you know, for you to try the game out. When I first tried Ark Knights, the beginner banner consists of Silver Ash, Siege, Aksha, Shining, Hoshiguma, and Angelina. And since then, they changed the starter headhunting gacha and it features Thorns, Mountain, Archetto, Plaintail, Suzerain, and Weed. Thorns is mainly recognized for his Elite 2 skill 3 but requires significant investment. Despite this, however, his Lord archetype allows him to attack both aerial and ground enemies from a distance. Mountain and Archetto are more cost-effective options. Mountain excels with his skill 2 for soloing lanes, while Archetto's skill 2 and marksman archetype makes her effective against aerial enemies. Flametail, Suzerain, and Weedy are also good units, but I say priority-wise, they are not a must-have for the early game experience. Amiya is not only crucial to the storyline, but also proves to be a valuable character in the early game. As a caster, she deals arts damage, making her effective against high defense enemies, and her low deployment costs add to her early game utility. The game also gives you Amiya for free along with her duplicates. It's important to note that a specific stage will require you to upgrade Amiya to Elite 2, so you should be prepared when the time comes since farming for chips is expensive sanity-wise. She can also be a great arts damage dealer early game if you don't have Aya or Kyobi. Just because you get high rarity units doesn't mean they're good from the get-go. Some of them still need quite a significant investment before you can use them at their minimum strength. So instead, try upgrading your lower rarity units like your 3-star operators. They are free and they do the job all the same. You can still bring a few 5-star and 6-star operators in your missions but when upgrading them, try to min-max your resource game by relying on your 3-star operators to carry you out until the stages will require you to change it up. The game will give you all the 3-star operators for free as you progress into the game and the 3-stars are also really good. In fact, Kyostin B showcased that you can clear the Chernobog Annihilation with just 3-star characters and they are also quite a low investment operator so it's a great choice for starting out. But as early as now, you should start building your solid team compositions for future stages. There are plenty of guides and tier lists on YouTube for your reference. In a squad, you have 12 slots, plus 1 support unit if you unlock the reception room upgrade in the base. The general rule of thumb is 2 units of each class, guards, snipers, defenders, healers, casters, and vanguards. Of course, you don't have to follow that to a T. You can swap 1 unit from your selected class for a fast redeploy like Project Red or Gravel if you really need to. The reason behind this is that you will have two different archetypes per class, example one range guard and one arts guard, or one AoE sniper and one single target sniper. There are two gacha currencies in the game, well three if you include the tickets, but primarily it's Orundums and OP, and no, it's not Optimus Prime, unfortunately, it's Originite Prime. Orundums are mainly used for gacha and Orundums are these ones, the red ones. This can be obtained by doing daily and weekly missions and as well as annihilation stages every week. You can get a total of 1,200 orundums from doing daily and weekly missions and 1,800 from farming annihilation stages totaling to 3,000 orundums per week. And even more than that if you decide to, you know, dip your toes a little bit in purchasing the monthly pack which gives 200 daily and a small sanity potion every day. And also, there is a permanent one-time mission that you can do per character called Paradox Simulation that gives 200 orundums per clear. Now do note that this is only limited to certain operators for now but I assume they will be available to all operators in the future. Originite Primes, however, is a very versatile currency. You can use it to buy skins, 
refresh your sanity, and convert 1 OP for 180 Orundums. I understand that buying cool character skins with Originite Prime seems tempting, but just wait for a bit. When leveling up, the shop has these level up packs that you can grab when you hit a certain levels. They're a good deal because they give you Orundum and extra resources. Once you brought all those packs until level 70, feel free to spend your Originite Prime however you want. Maybe on Gatchapos or those fancy skins. If you're into skins, I suggest going for the ones that cost 18 to 24 OP. The ones that are 21 OP have L2D animations and the 24 OP skins gives you L2D and an extra animation when you log in as long as you set your assistant with that skin. 18 OP skins will have special effects on skills. I won't tell you how you should spend your Originite Prime but it's generally not a good idea to use it to refresh your sanity unless you're planning to fund the development of Enfield. By the way, the game hands you Originite Primes whenever you complete a stage for the first time and trust me, if you clear all the main story stages in challenge mode, you'll get over 500 OPs just from that. And there are even more stages in Intermezzi and Side Story for you to earn even more so you're not short on opportunities to earn Originite Prime. <laughs> even though I say that, I still wonder where the fuck did my Originite Primes go, but regardless, spend them wisely. Now, I mentioned in my Art Knights video that no matter who you get, you will have a great time. That still holds true since most of the characters here are a mix of good and bad. However, if you want to take it easy going forward, try to plan out who you are trying to pull especially if the character you want is still coming to global. The one advantage of playing in global server is that we get to see the characters release first in CN since we are like about 6 months behind CN scheduling I believe. However, the disadvantage is that we have to wait until it comes to global, unfortunately. But there are plenty of YouTube channels showcasing the release of characters that come to global from CN, like for example, a lot of people are planning on getting Shu, a recently announced 6 star defender from a CN event, or Virtuosa and Jessica which should be coming very very soon. Do your research on who to pull by checking out reviews of that character and if it fits your playstyle. Also, kernel banners might tempt you, from my experience, even though it looks good on paper, it's a bait banner really. Especially when you get to make your own banner, or maybe my luck is just shit but I don't know. I don't recommend pulling on that banner. You're better off watching out for a top operator tag in recruitment. If you're a seasoned veteran player, you might already be aware of the community made websites for the game. When upgrading characters, you normally min-max resources especially when your stash is looking a bit dire. However, you can still be efficient with your upgrades by consulting a ship. It's a community-run website that has all the information that you will need to upgrade your operators like for example what you need to elite to upgrade your operator or how much LMD would it cost to upgrade etc etc. It's all there and I still use it up to this day on my journey to upgrade every character in the game. It also has this handy dandy recruitment calculator to narrow down which character you can get by combining tags like Vanilla, Ahegao, NTR, Katauka. What? Oh, those are the wrong tags? A lot of players tend to ignore this but it can really help you when you're trying a level for the first time. So generally how sanity works is that when you mess up a level, you lose some sanity points. But when you clear a level, you consume those sanity points required. If you decide to do a level using sanity, failing a normal stage takes away minus 1 sanity from the original cost. In challenge mode, you lose half of the sanity you spent and refunds the other half. Now, using drill plans can be super useful. It lets you practice a stage and figure out what enemies are there and when they show up. This way you can plan out your team and strategy for the real run with sanity. A practice run costs 1 drill point and a challenge mode practice run costs 3 each time. You get 30 drill plans every day so that's either 30 normal practice runs or 10 challenge mode practice runs. But for some reason after I do the practice run, I cannot even remember how I pulled off the practice stage to clear the real run. That's a skill issue on my part so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Even though we have all these operators leveled up, there will be a stage that you will struggle on. I even had to consult on a guide on how to clear TR-15, so yeah, definitely the lowest point in my Art Knight's journey. 
Strategy making is not for everyone, and I wish I had the brains to do crazy things like eating enemies across the map for no reason other than fun. My own fun looks a little something like this. I fear no enemy if no enemy comes out of the red box. With all the tips I just told you, it's important to have fun. Progressing in this game can be time consuming and it will definitely get hard as you progress. All you need to do is persevere until you reach a point that you're comfortable with the game and you can try out experiments of your own. It's definitely a game that you can play in and out without spending more than an hour or so in your free time. It doesn't require you to spend a lot of time with the game but it will definitely be there for you when you come back and log into the, your dailies with your assistant ready to greet you with a warm welcome. And before we proceed to the final thing, I need to thank you guys for 150 subscribers. This means a lot to me and I will definitely try my best to improve the quality of uploads and work on the quantity as well. So thank you so much. Also, 98% of you who came across my videos are not subscribed. And if you want to be notified of future content that I'm planning to make, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And finally, we're gonna be talking about how to manage your base. 